back. Hi. Hello and welcome to Knock Knock High with the Glockenfluckens. I am Dr. Glockenfluckin. What? Are you okay? I'm Dr. Glockenfluckin. Okay, I'm Lady Glockenfluckin, but I am also concerned about your mental mm, health. I'm fine. I'm good. I'm getting punchy. Yeah, I can We're tell. Late. It's late in the day. We're doing a rare night recording. Mm -hmm. And so we've had a it's full day. A whole 7.30 p.m. We're ready for bed. <sighs> it is late, you guys. <laughs> so late. Uh, I mean, who is productive past 7 o'clock at night? Night shift I people. say that as many people in medicine work at night. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but not uh, ophthalmologists. No. The last time I went into the... I, actually, I can't say anything because I have a call week coming up in like a week. Did you know mm. that, by the way? Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. And I don't want to jinx myself. Yep. Do you believe in jinxes? Um. Are you a superstitious person? No, but I also feel like, well, it can't hurt. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> it's not going to do anything, but I, it doesn't bother me yeah. either. If people want to do, it doesn't hurt anything. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's kind of that's kind of how I feel a little bit. Yeah. Although that may be a little bit more, like. I'm a little bit more convinced that I will jinx myself. And I feel like it. a lot of medical professionals are. Because what else do we have to go on? We have superstition and like nothing else. Nothing else. I don't know. Really? It's like That's we, depressing. We just have to, we have to. You have no data. No, no, no evidence. Just, no, no, just no, pure superstition. Su just superstition. No science when whatsoever. It comes, when it comes to how bad your call shift is going <laughs> to be. Yes. Um, what's like going the on? Like the Q word. You don't say the Q word. No, we don't. We don't. Actually, I, I don't really care so much about that, but people are. That's people, a big yeah. one. That's a really big one, especially in like traditionally very busy places like right, emergency, emergency departments. Yeah, stuff. yeah, yeah. Well, what's going on with us? We're about to we're about to go on another trip. We got a lot of trips. Yeah, the these fall days is very the, busy. Yeah, conference season. Conference season. But this one is a kind of a interesting a special conference. Yeah. We are going to our alma mater. That's right. We're going to Texas Tech University in the bustling metropolis of Lubbock, <laughs> Texas, <laughs> where there are literal tumbleweeds yes. that blow across the roads. And what are those storms? They're haboobs. Haboobs. Yeah. The wind dust storms. Yes. The, mm -hmm. They have dust storms. It is um, as fun as it sounds. Yeah, it's beautiful. But we, but do we love, have a very, very, very fond. But we do love Texas Tech. And part of that is because we met there. That's right. And, and it's where we went to college. And college is fun. Yeah, college is fun. Doesn't matter where you're at. You're just in college. If you're not having fun in college, you are doing it wrong. Yeah, I don't it's a, you could be in college anywhere. Uh, just just yeah. have fun in college. Right. But the the city of Lubbock is it leaves somewhat something to be desired. <laughs> but um but it does have a Well, no, we don't we there. haven't been there in many years. So I think twenty eighteen. Oh, no. we did visit. It wasn't twenty. When my brother, no, it was when my brother graduated. That was the last time we. Were I was pregnant. So it was 20, 2018. No, 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 no. I was not pregnant in twenty eighteen. No, not you. I, we're talking about two different things. When oh. my brother graduated. Yeah. Oh, you went. I, I did not. Yeah, I was there. Yeah, that's that was, why we have different was... memories. Nobody cares about this. <laughs> the point is, we're but it, going it wasn't back. Twenty eighteen. How old am I? <laughs> What year is it? I don't know. What? How old's my brother? He's five years younger than me. No, this was like 20, 2008 or nine. That's when we graduated. It was 2008. <sighs> I know. Math is hard this is so when you're hard. old. This is so, anyway, the point is, it doesn't matter. <laughs> None of this matters. Nobody's even listening anymore. I okay. scared everyone I'm away. I'm sorry, everyone. Please come back. Hopefully Jason can do all something right, with all this. At the end of this episode, we're giving a random listener a million dollars. <laughs> Of Rob's money. Anyway, we're going to go watch <laughs> the tumbleweeds this weekend. And uh, we're also dragging our kids. Yeah, we are. Because while it's not so much a tourist destination, uh, it is for our family, a part of our, our history. So they're going to go see where their parents met and where we went to college and, and had a lot of fun memories. The, the college is putting on a, a humanities conference and That's having right. us keynote. So we're, it's exciting. That's right. The honors college particularly, which is really meaningful. I don't know. You didn't, did you care so do you much? Guys, do you guys know that Kristen here is, was honors college student of the year? 
That's right. I was. Yeah. There's 2008. like there's like a plaque in her name in a break room somewhere. Yeah, probably. Well, no, I don't. I don't think they keep a plaque, do they? Sure, they do. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> we'll find out. We sure will. <laughs> So but wish us I luck, had a everyone. great time at the Honors College, and so it is very meaningful to be able to come back and speak to all the Honors students now, yeah. and uh, we met through the Honors College, in fact, and right. you were an we RA did. in the Honors dorm. I was. So yeah, I can't really say much about you being a nerd. I know. I we were both RA in the yeah. college, Honors College dorm. I am dorm. the bigger nerd, though, and I take that as a... Uh, a compliment to sure, myself. That's fine. You can yeah. be the bigger nerd. Yeah. I, right? Like you're smart, but but I don't know if you're a nerd. I would thank you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I think. I think. Anyway, <laughs> let's get to our guests. So we got some great guests uh, today. We are talking with a couple of orthopedic surgeons. Yes. We have Dr. Paul Zalzal and Dr. Brad Weening. Which are just great names to say. Great names. I mean, we talk about this during the during the episode. A of fun saying their names. Yeah. Uh, but they are, you may know them a little bit better as the hosts of Talking With Docs. They're the creators and hosts of this wonderful YouTube channel uh, where they provide medical information in a fun, entertaining way. I mean, orthopedic surgeons, they're just, they're fun people. It was a good time. And so we yeah. had a great time talking with them. And they're Canadians on top of it. So they're just like extra nice. Absolutely. It was yeah. really nice. Good guys. Uh, and so I hope you like it. All right. Here is Paul and Brad. All right. We are here with Dr. Weening and Dr. Zal Zal. Yeah, you guys, you don't, um, do you realize how big you are uh, in Canada? At, at least probably elsewhere too but we, we have gotten so many uh requests to have you guys come on the podcast so thanks for joining us oh thanks for having us yeah thanks for having us awesome to be here we, we, we were really excited a little nervous i was a little nervous because you guys are oh. so you're so nice and and smart and you have great hair we don't, <laughs> we don't take any of those boxes i mean i'm sure you're talking about my hair <laughs> yeah yes, absolutely man. beautiful <laughs> I also want to make sure our listeners know that w before we started recording, we were doing some mic check <laughs> things, and uh, and I heard them these two call each other, or I heard call, I heard I heard Paul call Brad bro like three different times. Yeah, this was it within thirty seconds yeah. of of meeting you guys, and you I had know, just taken off my headband <laughs> and put the dumbbells down. So That's yeah, right. yeah, <laughs> That's right. That's right. I I do want to I want to start there actually because. I, I, there, I know there are a lot of people that, uh, you know, on social media, seeing you guys, seeing me and, and, and the podcast and everything. And I'm sure a lot of people, the only like knowledge they have of orthopedic surgeons is like what I make videos about. That's me. And so yeah. that's you. I, yeah. I yeah. don't, I don't know anything about <laughs> orthopedic surgeons other than your character. So let's, uh. <laughs> Let's. I, this is a perfect time to kind of set the record straight here. Um. Uh. And I want to start with this question. Like, do you have to be like a a, a strong person, like physically strong, mm. to do orthopedic surgery? That, so, so I, I I would say yes. And actually, Paul has a very interesting story about residency where this was brought up. But I'd say, generally speaking, <laughs> yes, you do have to have a certain amount of strength. However, one of our greatest colleagues is a female, and she's like five foot two and she's a firecracker and she stands on three stools and she is strong as anything. So uh, where there's a will, there's a way as well. But, but yeah. Paul has a great story that actually lends yeah, to Yeah, you do have answer. to be strong. I learned that in residency. I was in like early residency, I think like first year. And I was trying to like reduce a femur fracture and you know, you have to pull pretty hard and manipulate pretty hard. And my staff guy, great staff guy, really, you know, nice guy, super guy. He looks at me at one point and goes, Paul, do you work out? And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, no, like with weights. <laughs> like, I, do, I do. They're lightweights, but I do. But apparently not strong enough. But having said that, our, our, our colleague, Heather, she is, she, she, you know, she, when I'm operating and they said, oh, here, uh, grab a mallet. And it weighs like 200 pounds. I'm like, who uses this mallet? And they're like, Heather. I'm like, oh, I can't lift Heather's mallet. Wait, what, what, on, what are you talking, mallet? 200 pounds? 200 what pound are you talking mallet. about? We use mallets. No, it's like a two to five pound mallet, but yes, it feels like 200 to Paul. It doesn't work out much with weights. <laughs> I thought yeah, I, I took that literally. I was like, oh my goodness. So, so it's, it's You're the strength. pulverizing the bones. The, uh, the strength comes in 
so because you're lifting like heavy appendages and you're having to move bones around and so it's it's not the like the the hammering and the and the malleting that is is that the word uh, verb form of mallet i don't sure, know it to, is now. to mallet something mm-hmm. um uh, is that is that difficult is that where the strength comes in yeah I, moving the limb is a lot if you're doing a knee replacement you're lift you're bending lifting that limb yeah. like 50 times you know what i mean so yeah i think there's just i mean it's a certain amount of strength i think brad's stronger than me what do you think brad I, I would agree with that, and, and particularly for fracture care. So you have to, if a bone's yeah. crooked, then you got to pull kind of the ends back together, and the muscles are trying to keep that deformed force. So yeah, there is a certain amount of strength required for sure. Yeah, it's, I gathered that bones don't really want to move much. Maybe not. We are very end of the, the spectrum uh, ophthalmology and orthopedic oh, yeah. surgery, and not a lot of mallets used little, in the eye. I, I move my just fingers little, like you know, just a little micro micro surgery. Um, my muscles uh, throughout residency atrophy quite a bit, <laughs> and and that's that's actually uh, an advantage for me. You know, <laughs> We know it's the opposite. We don't want people who are very physically strong. We want incredibly weak surgeons. That's what we want in ophthalmology. Well, I I can vouch for you there. <laughs> wow. Uh, wow, that uh, is tough. Uh, there you go. No, see? People love ophthalmologists. I mean, I mean, you guys, we get a bad rap as orthopods. Right? If you if you look at like, you know, it, it, ophthalmologists, they chose Tom Selleck to represent ophthalmologists in Friends, right? In the show Friends. Oh, that's Who's right. Oh, he was an that. ophthalmologist. Like, yeah. Oh, we got we got Tag that. in ER. You know what I mean? <laughs> I like nobody's guy. rooting for tag. I don't even know if that guy acts anymore, right? <laughs> nobody's rooting for tag. One Carol to get to Ross. That's, that's right. right. You know, we get a bad rap. Well, uh, so let's go into that a little bit. It, how do you feel about your the the public's perception of orthopedic surgeons, and how much have I contributed to that? <laughs> So, so I'd say a fair bit on the latter. You certainly are partially responsible for the propagation of stereotypes, but that's okay. Um, and I think at the end of the day, we know that it's not true. And we believe that, right. I mean, once you get into medical school, everyone has a certain level of intelligence. I tell my kids this all the time. You know, you didn't have to be the smartest person to get into medical school, but you probably had to work as hard or harder than a lot of people and kind of outlast them. So you're not mm. splitting the atom. You're not the applied math person or applied physics person, but... No, yeah, we're we're okay with being strong. No, yeah. I, I love your character. I mean, that character is awesome. And and yeah. and within orthopedic surgery, you've got different you know subspecialties, right? And so I think you, the character you create is is a very good sports orthopod, like the sports yes. medicine type orthopod. Mm-hmm. Oh, and they is that right? really, okay. They really are like that character. And, and we're we're interviewing right now, so we're hiring in our hospital, and and you know, and we're looking for a sports med, a sports orthopod. And they're the ones who played like you know, like nearly professional level sport, like a varsity sport of some kind. And they're just real athletes, you know. And then they gravitate towards sort of sports medicine and sports orthopedic surgeons. Yeah, we have well, a, I'm not that here, guy. We have a 60 year old <laughs> colleague who actually participated in the Ironman in Kona, like at 60, like he's oh, unbelievable. Wow. Oh my God. Yeah. Well, I, I think what another thing that people don't realize is, is yes, everybody's smart in med school, uh, but like people who go into orthopedic surgery, like you guys are like incredibly smart and, and you have to, cause it's so competitive to go into ortho. And I think, I think secretly, you're never going to admit this. <laughs> I think you use it to your advantage. I think you secretly like having kind of a little bit of low expectation in terms of your non bone related <laughs> knowledge. Hey, I'm there with ophthalmology. Same thing. Okay? Under promise over deliver yeah. works every you time. You can't fool me. You guys, I <laughs> know, right. I know. You no, know? And, I, and I think you're done. Cause one of your, one of your videos actually shows that really well where the guy's like, listen, uh, heart failure and diabetes and all the rest of it, you know? And then someone's yeah. like, listen, I'll just take care of it. And you're like, thank you so much. You're so smart. <laughs> we really appreciate that. I got to get back to the OR, you know? Yeah. <laughs> we do, right. we do, do I, that a lot. I think your ortho character is pretty smart though. Like for, oh, yeah. at first he was just like a dumb puppy, but as it's evolved, I mean, he's one of my favorite characters because he's smart but he's also super lovable and kind and he's there's affable. not a lot of those in your universe yeah and that, that's that's an honest representation of a lot of the orthopedic surgeons yeah. that i've met you yeah know? it's true you're, i think you're bang on with them we love it i get that sent to me like five times a week you know <laughs> a colleague so you get sick of it. That's, no we love it you get a good so kick-up. so tell me uh so you guys met uh during residency you got you went to the same residency program 
Yeah, so, so right? it's an interesting story. So I was in my last year of medical school um, and had gone through almost all of my medical school training. And I, when I first got there, I thought I was going to be a family doctor. You know, like all of us, you get to medicine, you don't really know what you want to do. And then after about 20 seconds in family medicine, I was like, this is probably not for me. Um, and then bang, through a bunch of different other specialties and landed on general surgery. And then I was at the very end, I did two weeks of mandatory orthopedics. And Paul was my senior resident. And thankfully, we had a really lazy junior resident who didn't want to do anything. So Paul, he would always call this guy and say, hey, do you want to go reduce this fraction? And the guy would be like, no, not really. So Paul grabbed me and then we'd go and straighten this kid's broken arm and have a bunch of laughs. And then before he knew it, he... Uh, I mean, so I, I kind of give him the credit and the blame for my career choice. Listen, I have to, I have to confess something to Brad here. I've, I've never told him this, and I'm, it's okay oh. with you. I can do it on this podcast. Oh, my. Okay, so we used to... It's he a safe know, space. I, it's okay. I have not. This is Very the first time you're going to hear this, <laughs> Brad. It's a theory, and it... it I, we we did reduce a lot of fraction. I remember, you know, like, Brad, my my you know my resident doesn't want to come. Do you want to come along? Sure. And and Brad was awesome, most keenest medical student, right? And we'd been there, but. Back then, we, we sedated the children with nitrous oxide, which is laughing gas, okay? <laughs> and we did it in a small room, and the seal for the laughing gas mask wasn't very good. So it leaked out into the room. Uh -oh. So I'm, <laughs> if it's want. fixed law, I think it's fixed <laughs> law of diffusion. I'm pretty sure we were all getting a little bit of laughing gas while we were doing that, <laughs> which explains why that rotation was so fun, Brad. And then thereafter, the rotations were just not that fun anymore. Yeah, you make <laughs> so a good I'm, point. And I'm brilliant. I'm sorry <laughs> that you based your whole career on that experience, <laughs> even though you were under the influence, most likely, of a pretty <laughs> high level of nitrous oxide. Laughing gas. Well, well, you know what? It all, it all worked out. <laughs> so, so you were... You were on the path to general surgery? I was, that... honestly, I, I knew all the people at, at the institution where I did medical school and essentially had a spot. Yeah, for sure. I was very close to just oh, wow. taking out gallbladders and colons. Were they disappointed mm. in you for uh, To be honest, the, the program director, he was, once he saw where I had applied, he was a little bit disappointed, I think, because I had done so many electives. You know, you, yeah. you invest a lot of time, obviously, in the specialty you're interested yeah. in. So I guess like flatteringly, I kind of want him to be a little bit disappointed, but I think he understood at the end of the day, you work so hard. You just want everyone to get to do what they want to do. Unfortunately, you had Paul there to drug you. He tricked me. Really like he influenced you <laughs> yeah. in that way. Yeah. Paul, what was it? What, what got you into orthopedic surgery? Um, I, I, well, I studied engineering before medicine, mechanical engineering, and then biomedical engineering. I always knew I wanted to go into medicine. My, my older sister was studying medicine. I, I was intrigued by it. And, and, you know, I really loved the interface of like uh, machine and humans. You know what I mean? I don't know if you guys remember that show, Six Million Dollar Man, that poor astronaut You're a little crashes. younger than us paul I have, I have heard those yeah. words okay. yes yeah so this guy he's an astronaut <laughs> he crashes he loses like both his legs an arm and an eye so some ophthalmology in there hey so, i'm sold i'm yeah. sold okay. so they rebuild him the engineers and the surgeons rebuild him with like legs and an arm and a bionic eye and he can like see farther and like see stronger and he can run faster and he's like and an arthropod yeah there you go <laughs> he would have been a perfect <laughs> arthropod yeah, i was a, a kid and i saw him and i just love the cyborg, the interface of machine and man. So now, you know, we place knees and hips so people aren't really strong or faster, but at least they can like get out of bed and walk to the dining room now. But yeah. that was kind of, so that's what I love. So engineering, medicine, yeah. joined together becomes orthopedic surgery in, in my mind. Yeah. Now, how have, how has the, uh, the culture of orthopedic surgery, do you feel like changed throughout your career? Cause you're, I don't know how many years you're into your, your orthopedic surgery career, but in terms of like the, the attendings that you had, Paul, like going through training, uh, compared to uh, maybe the way you guys are now, or or you know how how has that culture changed over time, or has it changed? Oh, it's changed. Yeah, <laughs> we, we had some characters. Uh, uh, we had some characters. I think Brad, your stories, your story sort of your sure opens so, it up nice. So both of us have been in practice. Uh, me just under twenty years, Paul just over, and. Residency is so stressful, regardless whether you're ophthalmology, yeah. dermatology, whatever. And especially yeah, early on you're... when you're like a first year resident or an intern and you're on your first rotation. I remember my very first rotation was in orthopedics. It was at a level one trauma center. And I remember one of my very first calls, um, it was middle of the night. Guy got shot with a, got a gunshot wound to his forearm, had a lacerated vessel and a broken bone. So 
So vascular surgery said to us in very typical, um, your kind of fashion said, listen, we don't want to fix it. And then you guys mess it when you fix the bone. So why don't you fix it quickly first? And then we'll deal with the vessel so you don't get in the way. So me and my staff went and did fix this bone. And he was notorious. Like some people said that he was like a black ops green beret from the UK. He had like size nine and a half hands, like the biggest hands you've ever seen. Mm -hmm. There were legends of feats of strength that he had done throughout his career where he lifted stuff that was not possible to lift. Anyway, he was terrifying. And so we're, we're fixing this form. And when you fix a broken bone, you drill a hole, you measure the length of the hole, and then you put in an appropriate size screw. But because of the gunshot wound, the bone was very comminuted. So it was in a whole bunch of different pieces. So he would drill and then I would measure and then tell him the size and we put the screw in. So he drilled and I'm trying to measure with this depth gauge, but because the bone is so broken, I couldn't hook it. And I said, I won't say his name. I'm like, I can't, I can't get it because it's so comminuted. And without looking up from the table, and this is classic shame-based learning, you know, the anesthetist, the nurses are there. He says, that's because you're doing it so badly. And I was like, <laughs> oh, no. what? I'm like, and wow. I, right. So, so I'm crushed, right? I'm like, what yeah. do you say to that? Sorry. Right. So he grabs a depth gauge out of my hand. He tries to, and he can't get it. And I was so happy that he couldn't get it. <laughs> Did you have to bite your tongue so hard to not right say it. that's because oh, you're doing can't. it so right? badly? Yeah, he can't say anything. I can't say it because I'm PGY1, right? So I, so I right, looked down. Right, no, but like that would be the first thing to. that popped you into my mind. Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah, sure. And he's like, <laughs> oh yeah, I guess you're right. It's so comminuted or whatever. And then and then we moved on to the case. And and this is a guy that actually liked me. Um, so after the case, he's like, <laughs> oh. oh yeah, you know, that was a tough case or whatever. And And it goes on interesting about this guy is he says, listen, I'm, I'm flying my plane to one of the clinics um, that's remote from here tomorrow at 9 a.m. If, you, if your call's not too bad, if you want to come, come. And I think he was saying, if you're, if you're too busy, then don't come. I was like, no, definitely, I'm in. So after my call, I've been up all night, eight in the morning, your shift's over. And then I drive out to the airport. So we get to this plane. It's like this two-seater plane that it turns out he has built. And I'm like, okay. So I'm, we're like shoulder to shoulder. And he's like a crazy, massive man. He, he says, oh, can you open up the glove box? So I open up the glove box. He says, can you hand me those? And it's like instructions on how to start the plane. And he's like, number oh, one. No. And I'm like, what? <laughs> and he's like, number two. I'm like, shouldn't you know how to do this? So anyway, so we get the plane started and we, we fly up. It's like a one hour flight. So we get up to about 10,000 feet or whatever. And he says, can you hand me the newspaper? And I'm like, okay. So I give him the newspaper. And he goes, okay, there you go. There's two steering wheels. He goes, okay, you can't do any damage up here. Just keep this line flat. So like he literally taught me how to fly a plane. And then wow. oh late, later on, other residents tell me, say, hey, did you know Dr. So-and-so has crashed his plane twice and, you know, had like near-death experiences in his plane? I'm like, no, that would have been good information to know before <laughs> I took the flight all the way up north Seriously? with them. Anyway, um, so yes, I'd wow. say the culture has changed a lot. And that's, <laughs> but it does drive you. I'm sure your staff are the same. It drives you to work so hard. You just, you just want to please your staff. You yeah. just want them to be proud of you. You just want to know the answer. You want to be a good surgeon and a good student and a good doctor. So at the end of the day, I think it's a fine balance, but some of it is a little bit necessary, I think. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you definitely want to, I mean, no matter what specialty you're in, obviously yeah. you want to like succeed and you want to, you know, become you know, insanely proficient in your job and be the best that you could possibly be. Uh, in, in surgery just feels like there's so many like life and death decisions yep. like in the moment, you know, and, and that's They're so finite, uh, right? And irreversible. Stress, the, the stress is high, I would yep. say. Sure. Uh, and, but then, you know, surgery over the years has that reputation of, of being difficult. I remember, and yeah, you know, I didn't graduate residency or a med school that I graduated in 20, <laughs> 2013, <laughs> 2013. Mm -hmm. And, <laughs> Like even you're then, not taking my hint. The, what? What? I'm not. I, I'm not saying they're old. Is we that know. What you're no, I'm we know we're old. I feel old. <laughs> we know we're old. Yeah, don't worry. They're young. We they're, yeah. we're, we're, we're like the same age, no, right? You I, guys, you don't have to answer. No, oh, anyway, so even though it's a podcast, I went through three different webcams before I realized. No, this is what I look like. <laughs> I, I'm serious. I'm not lying. Three webcams. And it's well, a podcast. Even, but but even like, you know, a decade, mm. like 10 years ago, like I still, I had moments in the operating room sure. where I, I felt shamed. Yes. And and it's, it's still something that it's like hard to get that out of surgery, it feels like. I mean, um, yeah. Is it not still there? I'm sure it is. I yeah. don't know. I, I mean... <clears throat> Do you guys work with trainees yeah. at all? Yeah, yeah, we do. It's still there. I mean, it's it's changed a lot. Like, like you know, 
when we were going through it, you know, the term mental health didn't really exist in, in our world, right? There were, you didn't worry about your mental health back then. And, 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 and there weren't many rules around, like you could be on call, you'd work all day, be on call, be up all night, and then you'd work the whole next day. Yeah. And, uh, you know, at the end of that day, you could go home and it was, you know, frowned upon if you tried to go home before that, because the idea was, well, there's so much to learn. If you go home, you're not going to learn it. But you'd be like, you know, I'd, I'd be, you know, uh, working all day, up all night on call for some some traumas or something. Then I was on a neurosurge rotation. And then the next morning we're doing a neck dissection in the OR. And then the surgeon hands me the knife. And he's like, okay, why don't you get us down there? And I'm like, like I can think of a few reasons why I should be <laughs> getting us down there. But that's changed. They came in with rules where you, at first it was, okay, you have to go home at noon the next day. And then even then, like, you know, if you're an orthopedic surgery resident, you're not going to follow that rule. You're going to break that rule and stay all day. And then, and then it moved to you can go home at 8 a.m. the next day. And, and you know, they, they you would just break that rule. But now, nowadays, it's a lot better. It's a lot safer. It's a lot healthier. And I still think you learn everything you need to learn. So yeah. while that culture, you know, there were some good things about it, but I think the, the bad things about it outweighed it. And it's, and it's gotten a lot. It's gotten a lot better now. I was having a discussion with some other staff guys at a te- nearby teaching center. And they're like, yeah, like, you know, if, if we know someone's, you know, post call, we make, we make them go home and just say, you have to go home. Yeah, that's good. That's, right? yeah. and, and that's I mean, how much can be. you really learn when you've been up for 36 hours or yeah. whatever? Like what we know about the psychology of learning, uh, that's not conducive to it. I know that the, the, what you, what we shouldn't do is make people be on call and then post call drive to an airport and learn how to drive <laughs> yes. a plane. Right. Uh, a two seater plane <laughs> into Northern somebody Canada. Somebody who's probably also sleep deprived. <laughs> yes. And may or may, may or may not be a giant, like he, a, an actual giant <laughs> person. Yes. So I'm He's, glad you survived that. Yeah, that, as was by I. By the way. Uh, I'm curious, how long are, are your average surgeries? So we do a lot of hip and knee replacements. So nowadays, to be honest with you, they're a lot faster and pretty efficient. So I'd say somewhere in the 60 to 90 minute range. Okay. But so, Brad we, and I do, we, we operate together on some, on like if you have a complicated case or a revision or something like yeah. that. We'll do it together. And those, those, you know, we can push three, four hours for some of those. Um, you know, uh, there are some complicated ones that go longer, but our, our sort of bread and butter ones are, yeah, but that. That's what, that's what pushed me away from other tech. Cause I loved being in the operating room, like surgery, but it was those, uh, four or five hour, six hour cases that just killed me. I was like, I need, I just didn't want to sit down. Yeah, yeah, that was, that was neurosurgery. Do you remember the neurosurgery rotations? <clears throat> We'd be in there. I remember like you'd start a case and then like the nursing shift would change and you a bunch of new mm-hmm. nurses and then, then the nurse would come back and I'd be like, oh, are you on break? She's like, no, that was yesterday's shift. This is my next day's shift. <laughs> and we're like, well, we're, still, we're still trying to get this brain tumor. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh my Those goodness. neurosurgeons, I mean, I, thank God I'm not a neurosurgeon, but they, they have some yeah. long, yeah. tedious cases. There's How no other they option. do that? So you guys, you you guys work in the same. You're in a hospital, like a big teaching hospital, right? So you're around the other surgical subspecialties. Is there is there like a secret hierarchy? Is there is there like a like rivalries? Are there? Do you butt heads with other? I mean, you can. They're not going to hear this. Sure, oh, maybe they will. So I'll let you in on a little secret. <laughs> Pretend they're not going to hear this. Orthopedics is obviously the, the king of the castle. Obviously, <laughs> so obviously, ophthalmology is second. <laughs> yes, yeah, clearly, right? second, and all the rest are tied. Even though for, we don't like to be in the hospital at all, but yeah, yeah we're still second. Find but everybody else is tied for third. So what I, <laughs> what I'd say is I would, not not really. To be honest with you, I think yeah. the hierarchy really happens at night when the urgency cool. of the cases changes. So orthopedics, oh, yeah. a lot of the broken bones are not super urgent, so we get pushed around a lot by you know oh, really? a perforated bowel or yeah, okay. um, an urgent like if you had say a, a retinal detachment or something like that that has to be fixed right away. A lot of our stuff can wait a little bit. Oh, I anyway. appreciate that, but even yeah. that can wait. <laughs> okay, but yeah, that's good to know. I'm coming at our ophthalmologist that say it can. <laughs> we're, we're actually that's in right. a community hospital that's affiliated with the teaching center, so we have kind of like the best of both worlds, oh, like community nice. setting, and we're affiliated with the academic center down down the street. And but so we do get teachers, but yeah, that, it's the evenings where the where the battle comes in, right? Where you're trying to get your case done off the board, you know, it's on the board. Those are those added cases, and then yeah, like. Brad said, you know, general surgery will come in, try and bump you. And then, and we share an anesthetist with like OBGYN. So there's like an urgent C-section. So you're all battling for the anesthetists 
so you can get in the OR. I got. I got to do. A, I can do a video about this. About uh, <laughs> oh, like you surgeons, oh. you know, yeah. trying to bump each other and, and yeah. take each other's OR. It's, time. It's, it's yeah, a, the bump. Honestly, Call it the it's bump. very real, and it's a great topic, and especially with OB. Like someone comes and says, like say the OB comes and says. Hey, Brad or Paul, you know, we have this lady who's been trying for labor for a long time. We need to do a C-shape. What do you say? No, the baby's going to have to wait. I want to fix my yeah. broken ankle. We can't. It's always yeah. baby wins <laughs> do every it. time. Every and, and it brings time. out the worst in everybody when yes. you're battling at night. You're tired. It's <laughs> night and, and everyone just gets mean and like pulls punches and sneaks around. I looked at your patient. They're fine. They're walking. That appendix doesn't have to come out. <laughs> oh, my God. I, mean, I gave some I antibiotics. It. It's like oh, it, it just it. brings out the worst, right? I, I don't like See, who I am this, after hours. This is why I love outpatient surgery. Yeah. This is great. Yeah, you don't have to deal with any of that. <laughs> but you guys do a lot of outpatient surgery. I mean, that's it's it's orthopedic. Well, like even big... hips and knees these days are probably they're either are same they day or next day. I would imagine same, same day or yeah. next day at most centers nowadays. Yeah, you're big right. Change. Our, our yeah. chief just came up to me today and said, it was, "It's like I like so we do outpatient, you know, hip and knee replacement." And I had, you know, I was. My nest says like, hey, your next case, you got her going home today, but I don't know if she's going to be able to go home today. I'm like, okay, well, we'll you know, we'll see whatever you think. And then, you know, I'm in between cases and then the, or my chief chief of surgery comes to me and says, hey, what can we do to get you doing more outpatient hip and knee replacement? I'm like, I don't know. I'm trying, right? And and th there is a push to do that, whether yeah. it's right or wrong. But we do like for my list today, two of my uh, three joints went home today. So yeah, they, wow. they, we are getting them home same day, right? Well, I want to I want to talk about uh, talking with docs. So, what uh, what was the origin of it? Because this is this is great. I've I watched. I, I never thought I'd learn about hemorrhoids from orthopedic surgeons. <laughs> uh, right? But I'm already I've, I've got to improve my diet. Not that I have I don't have hemorrhoids. Anybody? Everybody. There's no shame in that though. Even okay. Yeah. No shame. Yeah, yeah, it's okay <laughs> if you do have hemorrhoids. It's it's a safe you just spend an awfully long time in there. So we do right. sit down a lot in right. ophthalmology. Yes. That's right. Um, but uh, uh, it, it's great. Over five hundred thousand uh, subscribers on YouTube. It's just it's fantastic. So what was the the origin of this? Paula, you take that one. Okay. Well, <clears throat> you know. We kind of made the videos for our patients, right? Because we say the same thing over and over, and 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 we found people would forget, and <clears throat> and and you know they would call the office, and so we said let's just make them for our own patients, and and we looked at them, and, and you know some of the clinical studies show that hey, people forget sixty to eighty percent of what the doctor tells them, right? And well, don't try don't try using this statistic in any other way other than medicine. I tried it <laughs> with my partner. I was like late at work one day and she's like, why are you late? I said, I told you how to meet you and you didn't tell me. I said, I did. She said, no, you didn't. I said, look, people forget 60 to 80% of what the doctor tells them. It's not your fault. <laughs> that didn't go over well because apparently husbands forget nearly 100% of what their wives tell them because I was supposed to pick the kids up from school that day. So mm -hmm. don't use that statistic at home. <laughs> but we were finding that people were forgetting like 60 to 80% of everything you tell them. So we made these videos for our patients and then... You know, we're looking at it and like, I'm like, Brad, did you give our videos to like a thousand people? And he's like, no. I'm like, neither did I. And then, you know, oh, next week, did you give it to 2,000 people? No. And then we saw that there was an appetite for this sort of inform yeah. like information. You know, like we're not sponsored by anybody. We're just giving like medical information. We try and give both sides, even if we don't agree with it. And then we kind of like expanded it to other subspecialties and stuff we don't know. We get an expert, you know what I mean? We have some like really... Yeah. cool and funny colleagues yeah. um you know that that we bring on and you know like Nicole Callen who talked about hemorrhoids she's amazing and, and uh, Mike Heffernan our cardiologist we got him on and so we kind of landed in a place where we were like you know what we want to give like just medical information that's not sponsored we're not getting paid we're not asking you to buy something we're not asking you to come and see us we can't in Canada we're like overworked in fact we don't want you to come and see us <laughs> please you know, don't come just go somewhere else and we'll take this information <laughs> with you uh, but but we want two things. We want one, and it's an or. We want one to learn something, or know you know if you know something you didn't know before you watch the video, and two, have a little laugh, have a have a chuckle. You know what I mean? Have a laugh, learn something. That's that's all we want, and you know that's sort of how we've sort of stuck to that, and that's how it's evolved out. What year was it? When did, when did you start doing these? So we started in May of 2016, and then oh, okay. honestly, the real change, like I think it took us almost six years to get 100,000 subscribers. And then 
Yeah, now we're almost at yeah. 600,000. The pandemic really changed that, right? People were stuck yeah. at home, yeah. couldn't get access to a physician, were bored, were watching YouTube and and a lot of them found Same us. thing with me. Yeah, right? Absolutely. Yeah, just all of a like, sudden it was like, boom. Although Everyone was on your social pandemic media, right? experience was slightly different than the average yeah, person. Yeah, he had to go all, be all dramatic. I had a, I had a thing. Die right. for attention a while just to get some attention. Yeah, 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 it's gross. Yeah, exactly. That's quite a story. And then, but Paul, it sounds oh. like, like the the uh, the notoriety of having a successful YouTube channel went to your head and you went and tried to write yourself a sitcom, it sounds like. <laughs> Uh, like just like tone it down a little bit paul like there's limits to your talent okay no i'm just kidding move over tina fey it's tony <laughs> fey here now so yeah that was during the pandemic right because which was a weird thing right like we're we all had our projects we all, yeah, we yeah. All had projects right. well, what like brad what did, what did you before we hear about paul's uh, uh i'm surely successful sitcom paul brad what did you uh so, what was your so i'd say probably project? the the two things that flourished for me is i became like a plant-based eater so gave okay. up all animals. And I'd say the other thing is like I've grown a lot of my own food. I have uh, a very large uh, garden that grows. You right. name that's, it. She's just making everyone else feel bad. <laughs> all right, Paul, let's, let's. I don't know. I feel like we could play a game of like diagnosing people's like mental struggles by what their pandemic yeah. project was. That's, 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 that's too, <laughs> too productive, too good at like making his I life I also better. started right. to enjoy country music. Does that count for anything? Oh, that, that's, oh okay. dear. Now you we're guys are from Texas. Down. There you go. Yeah. 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 That's a little bit better. <laughs> Uh, we have, All right, we have, Paul, I want to hear about the sick. I want to, let's hear, let's hear your story. Okay. So, so it, the odd thing was, was it's during the pandemic, your doctor. So everyone thinks, oh my God, you guys are going to be so busy during the pandemic, aren't you? Right. Your surgeon's like, yeah, yeah. What can I do? You know, you phone the hospital, well, you know, it's a pandemic. What can I do? Okay. We need you to stay home. But yeah. People are dying. I'm a doctor. Yeah. Stay home. Okay. Well, should I call and check in? No, no, no. Don't call us. We'll call you. Okay. You just <laughs> what about all my my vital important surgeries? Yeah, they're they're all going to be on hold. How long? Indefinitely. It yeah. really sort of takes you down a notch, right? Mm -hmm. If I'm so I'm a doctor, I should be helping in this pandemic. And the best thing I can do is stay home. So I think, well, I got to do something. Um, so I took this online course uh, uh, through Stage Thirty Two, is based in California, and it's how to write a sitcom, and it's a six week course. And by the end of it, you've written a sitcom, right? Oh, so I'm like, cool. this is great. I got, because, you know, the stuff we do in the OR, we have such a laugh. There's so much funny stuff in the OR and the yeah. hospital. We, we have, we have a, real, a really good time. So I'm going to make a sitcom out of this, right? So I have my first Zoom meeting with everybody. And like, there's real writers in this course. I'm like, I am in over my head. These, these are real writers, right? I don't know how to write it. The only thing I write is like a prescription. And I can't even read it, right? I don't even, even write, write orders anymore. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. It's all electronic. Yeah. I don't even write that anymore. I write nothing. It's like, okay, that's fine. You know, I'm in over my head, but I'm, well, that's not a first time for me. So, um, you know, the, the, the first thing is, your pre is, you know, what's your premise? And my premise is, you know, I want to write a, you know, community OR, like a, the OR in the community. Uh, and it's going to be about um, trying to, you know, deliver world-class care on like a shoestring budget. That's my premise for the, and my, my feedback is amazing, right? Yeah. Like, uh, the guy's like, this is great. There's more, need more of these. The email's like all this glorious feedback and I'm just getting so inflated, right? I'm already writing my like, my SNL monologue, right? I'm, what am I going to wear on SNL? This is going to be huge. So then the next week is, okay, what's your setting? Well, it's a community OR. Great. That's amazing. We need community OR. Next one is develop your characters. Okay. So the characters are like me, Brad, you know, people we know administrators, nurses. I just, I, they're all in front of me. I don't have to make anything up. I, I just write up these characters. Feedback's amazing. Your characters are great. They're really, you know, I like the way you develop these characters. And I'm like, oh, they're real people. Like, you know, instead of Paul, it's Pete, you know, instead of Brad, it's Bill. It was, I didn't even change the names much. And then the next one is, okay, you got to write act one. All right. So I write act one and I'm waiting to get the feedback. I'm so excited, right? Because I'm waiting to get the Emmy on this one. And so the feedback is like, short. The email is extremely short. It's one line. I'm like, what? Your characters are not very likable. <laughs> <laughs> this, oh, no. this is us. It's me. It's Brad. Yeah. Like and I'm like, they're not. What are, you, what are you talking about? And so that it was kind of the next day yeah. at work, I was like holding the door open for people. They were like 20 <laughs> yards away. And I'm holding the door. I'm like, I'm not, I'm not going that way. I'm like, it doesn't matter. You change your mind. I got the door. I'm going for coffee. Here's a hundred bucks. Get coffee for everybody. Because it was a real mirror. Like, 
I was writing yeah. the stuff, the jokes we make, the stuff we do, the, and and it's not likable. And you know, and I thought, you know what? Like as a doctor, the one thing you got to kind of be yeah. is likable, right? right. Yeah, as orthopods, sure, I get it. So, so it, it was a real mirror for me to see yeah. that, hey, you know, what, what kind of stuff we joke around about, what kind of stuff we laugh about, it's not likable. So, you know, I rewrote it, tried to make it more likable and, you know, got the project done. Um, but yeah. it was it was it was a neat learning experience. Which which streaming service can we find this? On? <laughs> is this well? Is it, are you Hulu it's coming, or coming to one near you soon? <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll take a look. We'll uh, we'll look out for that one. Uh, let's take a let's take a quick break. We'll be right back. Hey, Kristen, what do you know about hearts? Well, I know they need to beat. That's true. And you're really good at making them do that. Yeah, I did that once. You helped me with mine. I did. I, was, I still appreciate that, by oh, the way. Oh, well, you're yeah, welcome. Yeah. You know what would help you learn even more about hearts? What? The Echo Core 500 digital stethoscope with three lead ECG. Nice. This thing is awesome. How do I look? How do I look? You look so the, fancy. Doesn't that look nice? Yeah. It's like, like anybody who listens to hearts in your job yeah. could benefit from one of these. That's right. It's got 40 times noise amplification, mm. noise cancellation, three audio filter modes, and a full color display. Yeah, so you can listen and see the ECG. That's it's right. amazing. It, it's really cool. I mean, what stethoscope allows you to do that? I know, we live it, in the it, future. It's incredible. It's also the best sounding uh, digital stethoscope that you're gonna find out there. Trust me on that. We have a special offer for our US listeners. Visit echohealth.com slash KKH and use code NOC50 to experience Echo's Core 500 digital stethoscope technology. That's E-K-O Health slash KKH and use NOC50 to get a 75-day risk-free trial and a free case and free shipping with this exclusive offer. All right, we are back with Paul Zalzal and Brad Weening. I love, I just love saying your name, Paul. Like, it just, yeah, it just like puts you in a good mood. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like you uh, can't be grouchy when you're saying Zalzal. Zalzal, that's great. Yeah. Um, I'm sure you probably get a lot of pronunciation, uh, you know, different things from oh, patients. Oh, yeah. It's and, amazing. Yeah. It's just, it's three letters repeated itself, but people manage <laughs> to mess it, it up. Yeah, just like Glockenflecken. It's such yeah, an easy it's thing. Spelled like, just like it sounds. Come on. Come on. Like how hard could it be? Um, all right. So we're gonna we're going to uh play a little game here. Uh, I actually didn't like name this. Let's just uh we'll, let's call it uh things we've forgotten. Okay. <laughs> a terrible name. <laughs> anyway, I don't know. Somebody somebody tell me what this should have been named after we're done with it. But uh <laughs> all right, so what we're gonna do is uh, because uh, a part of uh, what you do with talking with docs is so much education, right? That's, that's a big part of it, but you also have fun. So I want to try to educate our audience here. Um, what we're going to do is, Kristen, I've written down some, some ophthalmology-related things. Maybe it's anatomy or a diagnosis or something. And she's going to give you guys one of those things. And on the spot, you have no, I didn't give you any preparation time here. No, you did you not. You have to just tell me as much as you can about that thing. Okay. And then when it's your turn, you're going to do the same thing to me. Hey, Paul, we're, we're picking see, hard ones. You're, mm -hmm. You can pick whatever you want. All right. Whatever bone related thing that you want. Okay. Uh, and uh, and look, we'll just see, we'll see who knows the most about our two very, very different specialties. Uh, okay. I think that's why this is going to be fun because okay. they're like totally could not be any there are no bones in the eye guys no uh, and know. there's no eye in the bones there's no uh, there's, so there there's, you go you can't use the bones to see that that's it doesn't work that way <laughs> all right okay. so uh who, who should We're go ready. i guess we'll go first so yeah. yeah yeah you go ahead okay um cataract Ooh. Ooh. Clouding so, of the lens. Yeah, a clouding, a clouding of the lens where reduced vision over time, that's a process that can be treated with a lens replacement. Um, nowadays, nice. it's become a very, very efficient process that literally heals the blind. Probably the number one procedure to improve quality of life. Yeah, most commonly wow. in the elderly and actually can be as UV light is implicated in it as well as some other medications. That's pretty good. That is pretty good. And, I, I, and they stroked your ego oh, while they, they were at oh, it. Oh, they sure yeah. did. That's that was great. I, <laughs> I mean, you could have. I mean, because knee and hip replacements, you know, those things. That's quality of life. The right number there. two and yeah. three. And like oh, some, okay. there's yeah, some yeah, gotcha. real measure. Apparently, we are number two and three. You are number one at oh, healing yeah. the blind. That's like 
Oh, that's like a real. That's a real thing. Like a thing. There's real data they, behind they this. Measure it somehow. One, measurement improvement. Total hip number two. Yeah. I feel like I should have known that. Yeah. Yeah, I think you should have. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, I'm, I'm impressed. That's good. Yeah. And, okay. and uh, that's okay. You said you said a high bar there. Okay. Yeah, they're talking about implications and treatments oh, and oh all gosh. sorts of things. All right. All right. Give me a. I would have just been fine with you saying <laughs> like clouding of the lens, but whatever. All right. Paul, all right. you or me? Well, give they're they're ortho. They're overachievers. So. That's right. Yeah. Really secretly. I got, all right. Give me. Get, what do you got? I got one that I got one that kind of bridges the two of us. Um, osteogenesis imperfecta. Oh, it does. It does bridge nicely, though. Yeah. That's a good awesome. one, Paul. So can I can I take a stab at what it is? You go ahead. I yeah, and then I'll I'll try to clean it up. Okay, osteogenesis. So that would be like like new bone being created. Osteog yes. Okay. Or bone. Genesis of bone. Generating. Okay. Yeah. And then, like, imperfect. Obviously, something has gone wrong in the process of bone generation. Pretty good. Yes. That's excellent. I think, so it's. Uh, if I recall, it's a it's a a um, defect in a type of collagen formation, I think. Um, and then, for, as far as the eye, it, one, a sign of osteogenesis imperfecta is you get uh, a blue color to the sclera yeah. because you have thinning of the sclera, uh, and the reason it looks blue is because on the other side of the sclera, which is the white part of the eye. Uh, you have what's called the choroid. And the choroid is, um, it has a kind of a bluish tinge to it. Mm. And so you can, I, th I think that's, I think that's, that's why it. you see it. I think that's why it looks blue. <laughs> I, I, I have honestly never seen osteogenesis imperfecta uh, in an eye clinic. That but, was um, perfect. That was yeah. exactly what I was looking for. Is one thing that bridges ortho and ophthalmology, kind of the only thing I could think of. But the blue sclera <laughs> yeah. is one, one yeah. is a sign of one type of the of osteogenesis. What, what's the underlying defect? What's the what is it? Like what what causes? It, you you pretty well describe it. There's four types, and yeah. uh, okay. and it, the under the underlying you know manifestation of it is just fragile bones, bones that break and break okay. and break and break. Gotcha. Unfortunately, even as a kid, so a lot of these kids come in with multiple fractures at a very young age, and and even for the parents can be difficult because they can be accused of of, of abuse yeah. because young young children are breaking bones with no trauma, and they come in they've had seven or eight fractures by the age of three. So until it's diagnosed, it's actually a very very difficult situation. Mm. Yeah, that would be rough. Yeah, I imagine that's not a very common thing. Very you don't uncommon. you probably don't see this very often. All right, what do what do we got, okay. Kristen? All right, an eyeball one. Um, macular degeneration. Ooh. Okay, so. Let's see here, Brad. So macular degeneration, there's, there's two types. There is wet and dry. Um, as they progress, they both can lead to blindness. And it may be the number one, is it one of the number one causes potentially it is of the number blindness? one cause of blindness. Number one cause of, of age-related blindness? Mm. No. Uh, well, it depends on. Uh, Population, which, I guess, maybe. Which country you're talking about? A worldwide cataract. Oh yeah, worldwide. Number one cataract. Cause okay, blindness. but but uh, macular degeneration. Maybe irreversible up, yes. blindness. E yeah, that makes more sense. I think glaucoma is two, and macular degeneration would be three. Oh, okay, yeah. in a podium anyway. Yeah, so it's up there. Top three. It's up there. <laughs> it's a podium. Sorry. It's I don't expect three. you to know the epidemiology of, of of ophthalmology <laughs> yeah, just, conditions. They're really taking this far. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, then, you know, <laughs> this is a game, not a test. Yeah. You know that, right? <laughs> Uh, do you know? Do you know how? Uh, what are the two types? Do you remember that? Wet and dry. Wet, wet and dry. Yeah, he do you said know, that. Do you know? How, oh, he did say. That. Do you know how to treat the the wet form? What do we is do? Is it like that? dermatology where you just anything dry you make wet and anything wet you make dry? <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was all of derm. <laughs> Don't tell Doctor Pimple oh. Popper we said that. You do. You do want to dry the wet, but you do not want to wet the dry. That's for sure. I am not familiar with the treatment <laughs> for the dry. Yeah. So. <laughs> no, that's great. That's actually really good. Um, there's a wet form and a dry form. The wet form is whenever you have uh, bleeding in the in the back of the eye, in the in the macula, which is mm. the the part of the retina that's most important for vision. That's where your best acuity vision occurs. And so, if you have a wet form of macular degeneration, you get a blood vessels that grow into there and you and treat it with a laser and cause swelling. You treat it with injections. Mm. Laser's the old way to do it. Oh, okay. that's what we did like when you know, we 20, were 30 years ago. Right, when we were residents and med students. Yeah, yeah. that's probably <laughs> maybe what you learned. Yeah. yeah. And it was a 
pretty much a terrible treatment. Oh, okay. It's like it, it didn't work very well, um, and people generally just went blind. Mm. But now we have these intravitreal injections. Okay. Which sounds just like yes. uh, Kristen looks, right? It sounds horrible. It's horrifying. It's horrible. But it's but it's actually a really easy, common procedure, and um, it's totally revolutionized wet macular degeneration. So it's yeah, the dry form we don't have as many options for, but that's that's more of a long term. Do you think you know, someone after line. hearing this is going to maybe look into making the dry form wet or no? <laughs> no, no, please. No. please uh, this, but good job, you guys. Okay. That was great. Macular degeneration. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Let's, okay. Let's, so the one that I'm going to go it. with is okay. compartment syndrome. Ooh. Whoa. This is actually one that uh, I can relate to in ophthalmology. Oh, ooh, yeah. Ooh. I'll tell you why. Okay. Go, what do you have any idea? A compartment, compartment syndrome. syndrome? This, this would be a hard one if, with, with no medical background. Whatsoever. Yeah. I, not, um, it's not intuitive. You have a, a compartment syndrome. You have a real hard time putting things back where they belong. <laughs> That's <laughs> it. You got it. Yeah, That's pretty good. Um, so compartment syndrome um, would be if you have, I guess there, there's natural um, uh delineation and, and with the natural compartments that are separated by tissue planes or something like that and if you have an increase in pressure within that compartment that mm -hmm. within that tissue plane or something then um you can cause like uh fascia fascia planes fa something something fascia related there's yeah. a fascia in there you got it uh and if the pressure in that compartment yeah uh, gets to too high then it can cause uh damage to the muscle it can cause uh you can lose blood flow to that compartment and so things kind start... of a reverse titanic situation Think... <laughs> <laughs> things start to die off and and it just you have a damage permanent damage to the muscle that's perfect um, bang on yeah. wait where are the compartments located you didn't make that clear are they in the muscle yeah, they're you, in the I, bone what are we talking legs about and the arms right no, no i'm talking like what kind bone Muscle? What? Is there, you know, I don't know. Yeah, so, so there's compartments throughout our body, but the most common place you have compartments in them is in the arms or the legs. And so there's multiple different compartments in, say, your lower leg. So if you break your tibia, the bleeding can increase the pressure inside of one of the specific compartments or the amount of swelling associated with the trauma. And then you're exactly right. So as that swelling increases, it compromises the blood flow, damages the nerves, and ultimately can cause the muscle to die. So if you don't release those pressures in a very time-sensitive fashion like four to six hours this is when we get to bump other cases on the board you don't want to do this case <laughs> this where you're like thing, yes right? you got to go to the or you actually make an incision releasing essentially a tight compartment so that it can expand and save the muscle you can lose your leg for sure or even die as the muscle dies then it can lead to my have, myoglobinuria and then kidney failure yeah. i have Jeez. a very vivid memory in med school of seeing an orthopedic surgeon stick a Striker, something. Striker, yeah, that's a pressure, pressure measurement. Pressure measuring. A yeah. pressure measurement tool into a compartment, <laughs> right? To Good see call. if it was high pressure. Like that, do you guys still do that? That's, exa that's yeah, exactly the one. The striker manometer. Yeah, to measure the pressure. Okay. All right. That also sounds horrifying. <laughs> it is. It's a very so, bad diagnosis. You don't want any part of it. <laughs> no. Well, it's same thing with in ophthalmology. We have orbital compartment Ooh, syndrome. So right. if we have a retrobulbar hemorrhage, so a, a bleed behind the eye, it'll push the eye forward, but you can only push it forward so much and you know, the eye just kind of gets trapped by the eyelids and you have to How make come it doesn't decision. just pop out because the eyelids will keep it from yeah, but if out. the pressure's high enough can it overcome the eyelids mm, usually not because it happens very <laughs> <laughs> it's a, there's there's no generally no popping that's another yeah. whole <laughs> your, your eye can kind of pop out but but uh that's a whole nother i think the wow is you dropped something <laughs> you drop something. We had, I mean, oh, this is really getting off sub, you know, on a tangent here, but we had my brother growing up had a pet rat. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know why, because boys are weird, but the my mom was vacuuming one day and the rat did not like that, totally panicked, and it was trying to get out of the cage. It just kept like hitting its head against things. And it's I came out because oh, wow. it just kept giving I thought, itself. I thought your mom was gonna vacuum up the rat. That was oh, shockingly no, but graphic. The, yeah. <laughs> the <rest. Seriously. laughs> my goodness you really wanted to get out of that interesting cage. animal experiences that's, uh, yeah, my childhood. did she that's vacuum up the eye after it came out that maybe would be no nice. it's still it was still attached it was just kind of like dangling like wow. um wow. you know the rat made a full recovery and we won't accept any follow-up questions uh, on that 
Let's go to the next one. Pete is on, on the phone. Feed it. Um, let's, let's okay, do... no, I got, I, got, I, oh. I know what I want to do. All right. All right. Okay. Okay, are you ready? Yeah, we're ready. We are ready. The eye. Okay, I put that on there <laughs> just, in, just in case they were having trouble with the first two, okay? I think we could skip no, I think the... now we can have a oh, comprehensive a bra, answer bra, of bra, everything yeah, they know about the eye. <laughs> yeah. Settle in, everyone. Get uh, your popcorn. God. It's the thing I that severely it's a thing underestimated that sees their ability. The eye is the thing that sees the bones. <laughs> That's right. I want you to... <laughs> I want you to. Uh, I want you to do one of the other ones. Okay. Um, don't tell me what to do. <laughs> Come on. I, I feel a glaucoma question coming. <laughs> I'm an independent woman. Okay. Okay. Ready? All right. Strabismus. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. So it kind of relates to orthopedics a little bit because mm. it it relates to the abnormal pull or lack of pull of muscles making the eye go to the side. If I remember correctly, it's wow. the lateral rectus, LR six. I remember is that wow. is that cranial nerve six? Look at that. Hey, <laughs> God, did I just, they're nerves. a lot smarter than did you. Did I blow your Look mind right that. there? That's pretty, that's pretty nice. Yeah. LR6. I yeah. remember that from med school. That's good. That's good. <laughs> yeah. The, the abducens nerve. Nice. Abducens nerve. Um, uh, ophthalmology, we get. Because it abducts? It, it uh, does. Yes. Yes. Uh -huh. It abducts. Look at me. The eye. There you go. But you can get strabismus in any direction. So it can be mm -hmm. up and down and left to right and even a, a torsional. Strabismus. Does it tend to just happen in one eye or can you get it in both very commonly? No, yeah, you can have it. I mean, it can affect you because you have muscles on either eye. So, right. But like if you get it in one, do you tend to also mm. get it in the other? Or there, no, yeah. I mean, okay. th there's lots of a million reasons you can get strabismus. But um, with but Christmas yeah, coming, so. it reminds me of that scene from A Christmas Vacation where Randy Quaid's talking about his daughter and he's like, it's kicked by a mule or eyes go cross eyed falls in a well to go back. You know? <laughs> <laughs> one of my Is that how it works? That's what you do in the OR. Yeah. How does how does that relate to ortho? The muscle. Oh, just the muscles. Yeah. The imbalance in muscles. Imbalance in oh, muscles. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Causing that's what happens. It's a bit of a stretch. It's not blue sclera, but stuff. it's a stretch. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys, one more. Let's, okay, let's hear it. What do you got? Yeah. Ooh. Um, okay. I'm gonna pick one that let's see here. Um chondromalacia patella. Because I like saying uh, it. Oh my god. Chondromalacia patella. Something about the knee. Yes. Nice. Because patella, yeah. Uh -huh. Yep. You know, what do you think, chondro? I have no idea what that is. That's cartilage. Mm -hmm. Malaysia. A small country. No. <laughs> Wait. Wait, sorry. <laughs> chondromalacia. I don't know what Malaysia means. Is that Malaysia's, bone related? Yeah, it's like atrophy. Oh, okay. It's like a, so the I think cartilage in your knee atrophies? Atrophy pretty of knee close. cartilage. It's pretty yeah. close. Uh, I mean, but it's patella. So it's got to be more something more like with the patella tendon. The patella, just the underside of just the patella. The patella. The cartilage cartilage underneath the patella is um, soft, not well. Oh, okay. Chondromalacia patella. It's also called anterior knee pain. It's also called patellofemoral syndrome. And it's uh, it's like seven out of 10 knee pain complaints to the primary care physician is that kind of oh, really? in front knee of the knee, knee pain soon. like kneeling squatting the stairs the that kind of stuff what do you what do you do for it uh the mainstay of treatment is physiotherapy to balance the muscles around the patella to oh. get it to track better and hopefully anti-inflammatory sometimes thought... injections Ortho was all about bones and it is but also they're mm. talking a lot about muscles i had never well, they are put that together. I know, but muscles, like I just cartilage. don't think of muscles when I think of ortho. I think of bone. So yeah, yeah very interesting. A lot of people think just something. feet when they say orthopedic. I thought it was just feet. Oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, really? You get that a lot? Yeah. Do they know that you guys don't really care about feet at they all? Hate yeah, the feet. we tell them. <laughs> Except our colleague feet. Danny, who's like a foot and ankle surgeon, but we mostly don't. Hate so them. no kidding. Like we we legit skipped the foot in, yeah, in like anatomy of so med, in med school anatomy like we were doing going through the whole body and then we just at the ankle we learned the ankle bones and they're like yeah, and then the foot. there's a foot there's a Who foot cares there. about bunions move yeah. on <laughs> the first world problem <laughs> <laughs> all right well that was that was good that was good hey, you guys yeah. i'm impressed yeah you got i got one more um oh. uh, overlap that i like to to talk about with orthopedic surgery so one mm. of the very few ortho ophthalmology things um, is if you have a long bone fracture, mm. uh, you get um, a fat emboli. Yeah, yeah. 
that can go to right the eye. Occlusion. That's right. Yep, and you can you can lose quite a bit of your vision. It's, oh, wow. it's like a, stroke, essentially, syndrome. an eye stroke. Yeah, fat emboli syndrome. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's a good there overlap. Yeah, there, see, yeah. we got so much in common. Blue sclera. Yeah. <laughs> so much emboli. in common. We're the same. We're basically the <laughs> same <laughs> specialty. You know, Actually, I'm right? gonna call my go. secretary. I'm booking a couple yeah, cataracts right. for tomorrow. Go for it. <laughs> How hard could it be? Get in there. Get your mallet and just right. get in there. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Well, let's take uh, let's take one more break, and we'll we'll come back and wrap up with Paul and Brad. All right, we are back with Brad Weening and Paul Zalzal, uh, and uh, <laughs> and so, what are you planning on doing with talking with Doc? How long can you keep this up? Are you gonna are you gonna are you gonna keep practicing? Because because clearly it's taken off here, and you got Paul writing sitcoms left and right, and like, where is it? Where are you going with it? What, what are your plans? So, so I'd say we definitely want to keep doing it. Um, the feedback, like it said, has been really great. We feel like it's providing a necessary service. We're, we're surprised at the, the need that it's yeah. hit. And honestly, there are limitless topics. Even within ophthalmology, we could probably do 100 different topics. We'd love to have you on as a well, guest clearly somehow. you can. We just proved right. that. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. But, <laughs> but then I think... Something bigger? Who knows? Maybe, uh, maybe show. Paul, yeah. do you have any thoughts on that on show? Yeah. Well, yeah, we want to keep going and, just, you know, more medical experts. But we have talked about, like, taking it, like, make, making a show, you know, where basically yeah. you're e- educating but and entertaining at the same time. You know what I mean? There's a lot of shows out there where, where they're, you know, strictly, you know, just strictly information, not a lot of entertainment or fun. And, and we want to, you know, that would be sort of... A, a dream for me anyways, if we could just take it to the next level, make like, yeah. you know, a half hour or one hour show and on every topic, you know, you're going to, we're going to, we're going to cover MI. The viewer is going to watch this show. They're going to laugh a bit and they're going to know, you know, as much about heart attacks as a, you know, third year medical student, you know what I mean? But have a good time learning about it. And, uh, you know, and as you know, laughter, you know, is the best medicine we say. Uh, yeah. No, Paul, it's a good way Paul, to, that's actually not to true. teach people. I, I think penicillin is probably the best medicine. <laughs> Well, penicillin's yeah. a good medicine. You know, we say be, laughter is yeah. the second best medicine. Yeah, yeah. What about, yeah. What about <laughs> vaccines, <right>. Paul? <laughs> vaccines That's are a, good, oh. too. A lot of things. but La- you know. Laughter's La- the third best medicine. Laughter's top 10. We'll say laughter's top 10. What about How Viagra? About Viagra's a good medicine. Mm, that's very, very, very high. Very high up there. I mean, How does he even know sure. what body part to act on? Fine. <laughs> <laughs> laughter's not even medicine, right? But it's like... <laughs> It's the, it's fun. It's important part of medicine. I yeah, and, until you die laughing, and then it's not so good. Anymore. Well, as surgeons, I say we'll have you in stitches. Either way, there you go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, everybody should check it out. Uh, it's uh, uh, just talking with docs. It's good. I'm impressed by uh, do you, how much research are you doing? Like putting these topics together. Like, do you have to do a lot of reading? Probably the further you get from 100%, 100%. from oh, yeah. med school, you're like researching it on your own because i do that too yeah and that was nice about doing the ortho stuff at the beginning all of our videos were just essentially talking about what you did as a job and that's how we prep our guests we're like you don't have to study just tell us what you do every day but yes once you start doing stuff outside it it, that's where all the work is to be honest with the filming takes like we did 99 percent first takes we don't have a script we just kind of go and and see what happens but yeah it does take a lot of work like learning about ophthalmology like there's a lot of stuff to know yeah. Clearly you've done your homework. That's, <laughs> That's good. right. Well, thank you guys for joining us. It's really been a pleasure. And um, it's always good talking with orthopedic surgeons. Yeah. So, I feel so nice after to me, this, like, yeah, there, I do see your character in, in Paul and Brad here. You like, go. you can just spend a, a good time with yeah. ortho. Yeah. Okay. yeah. You did a good job with that character. We love him. We love him. And thank you so Thanks much for so having much. us. It was awesome to meet you guys. Yeah. We have a lot of respect for you. I love what you guys are doing. Yeah, appreciate yeah. it. Thanks, thanks for what yeah. you do. We do love it. We do get a kick out of it ourselves. We appreciate it. And thanks for having us. This was a lot of fun. Thank you, guys. Good talking to you. Cheers. All right, let's take a look at some of our favorite medical stories. We have one story, one, a really nice one. This is good. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is for you. It's for me. Yeah, yeah. We have a fan, a story from Alex. Okay. Alex says, uh, writing in to say a little thanks. I just listened to your podcast episode with Dr. Lindsay Fitzharris and Adrian Teal. At the end of the episode, I had a little today I learned moment where Kristen made a remark that media is the plural form of medium. That's right. I you, remember that. Yeah. Well, the, the Alex didn't know that. I'm sure a lot of people didn't know that. Yeah. I never there you put go. The, he said, I never put that together. 
in my 30 years of life. Thank you, Kristen. <laughs> well, the more you know. <laughs> Happy to help. What a wonderful thing that you did for Alex. <laughs> Shut up. Thank you for the email, Alex. Uh, and uh, send us your uh, comments or stories or uh, anything. Knock, knock, hi at human-content.com. We want to hear from you guys. Uh, thank you for joining us. Um, what a fun episode. That was super fun. Yeah. I feel like they lived up to to my expectation. Ortho's my favorite character it was of the, yours, so they really, they lived up to it. Yeah, and they were the, uh, that was the first, the, they were the first orthopedic surgeon guests That's we've right. had mm-hmm. on our podcast. So uh, I can't believe it took us this long to get to ortho on the podcast. It's, it's I don't know why. No reason in particular. Like, like every ortho is would be a fun guest. Yeah, I feel like it. There's so many ortho. Have we had a urologist? I know they're going to be fun too. We have to look. We have to think about uh, that. Yeah, I don't know. I, I'm trying. I'm I going feel like through. we did, but then I'm like, I feel bad if I forgot. Okay. <laughs> well, I mean, we just, you know, off the top of your head, you know. Yeah, it's hard to know. We've, we've done, done a lot, done of, episodes a lot of episodes now. Episodes. Yeah. But uh, uh, ortho, urology, what are the other really fun um Emergency's fun. Emergency. We've had some emergency. I mean, they're, they're all fun and they're in their own way. Yeah. But some of them just have the most. The, the, They've got like an energy. Yeah. You know? and, and very interesting personalities. Yeah. And, and really good stories. So. Right. Um, so that was that was great. And that and again, that's just uh, talking with docs. Definitely check out their YouTube channel. Great stuff there. What did you think of the game? You, you like know, that? I had my doubts at the beginning, but it turned <laughs> out to be really fun. I think they saved it for you. <laughs> oh, come on. I think it was fantastic. No, it's really good. Yeah. I, I got to learn a thing or two about bones. That's right. I don't get to learn about bones very often. See, even when med students grow up, they still like mm-hmm. they still seem to like just big grown up med students, right? Like they wanted to get it right. They, they right. were worried exactly. about how much they could remember. Well, we, you know, we try to do a game for every episode and it takes a lot of like and mental energy to come up with games so yeah. if you guys have ideas for games let us know lots of ways to hit us up by the way email yeah. us knock knock high at human content.com you can visit us on our social media platforms which are all of them and you can hang out with us and our human content podcast family on instagram and tiktok at human content pods thanks to all the wonderful feedback you guys are giving us so we'd love those uh getting good feedback on knock knock i as well I'm struggling. It's, we're, <laughs> it's uh, this a little is the, late. It's the end of the day. Yeah, we don't normally record at this time, so we're. Yeah, I spent all day uh, in clinic. Mm. I saw a lot of patients today, mm-hmm. so I'm a little tired. That's okay. I'm not too tired for our listeners. Uh, if you subscribe and comment on your favorite podcasting app and on YouTube, we can give you a shout out. Like today, we have a comment from uh, Stephanie Smith seven nine nine zero on YouTube who said. I love that you were doing a podcast about ophthalmology with Knock Knock Eye. Thank you. People like the eyeballs. Yeah. I have been surprised at the <laughs> amount of interest people have in, in eyeballs, but in they really, really do. They're, they're, you're surprised people are interested in the thing that I've devoted my career to? Well, it's just that eyeballs are icky, right? Like a lot of people have an eyeball issue. You know this. That's why very sure. few yeah, but med they shouldn't. students go into ophthalmologies because it, a lot of people can't take the eye. It's, but they are fascinated fun, by it. Everyone. Okay. I don't know what <laughs> she's talking about. It's a, I didn't say it wasn't fun. I just said like there's that barrier sure. of people don't like the idea of touching eyeballs. They are a little slimy at times. Mm-hmm. I'll give you that. Uh, full video episodes of this podcast are up every week on my YouTube channel at D Glock and Flecken. We also have a Patreon, lots of fun perks, bonus episodes where we react to medical shows and movies. You can hang out with other members of the Knock Knock High community. We're we're growing. People are moving to us. Oh. They're moving within our city limits. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. We've got city We've, limits. Oh, do we yeah, have uh, all the amenities? We do. We've got a, a movie theater. Uh, we've got a community center. We got several restaurants, and some of them are good. <laughs> Interactive Q and A live stream events, early ad free episode access, and much more. Patreon.com slash Glockenflecken or go to Glockenflecken.com. Speaking of Patreon community perks, new member shout out to Dr. Funky, Woo. William S, Ryan, Dimitar, Mary D, and Aviga. Welcome. Those were Thank fun you. ones. Those are, those are fun ones. Uh, and shout out uh, to, as always, to the Jonathans. We have Patrick, Lucia, C, Sharon S, Omar, Edward K, Stephen G, Jonathan F, Marion W, Mr. Granddaddy, Caitlin C, Brianna L, Dr. J, Ross, Box, Chaver W, Leah D, K, L, Rachel L, and P, Keith G, 
JJH, Abby H, Derek N, Jonathan A, Mark, Mary H, Susanna F, Mohammed K, Aviga, and Pink, Pink Macho. Pink Macho. <laughs> Patreon Roulette, random shout out to someone on the emergency medicine tier. We have Justin. Thank you, Justin, for being a patron. Happy to have you. And thank you all for listening. We're your hosts, Will and Kristen Plannery, also known as the Guacom Pluckins. Special thanks to our guests today, Dr. Paul Zalzal and Dr. Brad Weening. Our executive producers are Will Flannery, Kristen Flannery, Aaron Corney, Rob Goldman, and Shanti Brook. Our editor and engineer is Jason Portizo. His music is by Omar Binsvi. To learn, and now this is the part for all of our patrons, because we know that they like to listen to the very they end do. of they this. They told us. They told us they do. Mm-hmm. They told us that they're waiting for this. To learn about our Knock Knock Hives program disclaimer, ethics policies, submission verification, lights, and terms, the HIPAA release terms, you can go to glockandplugin.com or reach out to us at knockknockhive at human-content.com. With any questions, concerns, or any fun jokes you have, puns, or, or games. Blows. Or games. Or games. Yeah. Good too. Knock Knock High is a human content production. Knock Knock. Goodbye. Thanks for watching the episode. You can find more on that playlist over there. If you prefer to listen or you just had your eyes dilated, you can binge full episodes wherever you get your podcasts or join the party over on Patreon where you get early access episodes, hang out with us, get lots of exclusive bonus content. Hope you subscribe, leave a comment below. Let us know what you think.